guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Agatha, for those who are new to my channel. And for this episode, I will be talking about my experience in, get, in getting a Japan visitor visa for me and my family. Now, ito kasi medyo 2018 pa to eh, I think. Yes, 2018 pa to. So, it may be updated right now, pero i-share ko na rin kung anong process ang ginawa namin, ano yung mga requirements uh, na pre-repair namin for uh, obtaining a Japan visit visa. Now, syempre, lahat naman tayo gustong makarating sa Japan. Kaya isa rin yun sa mga... Actually, yun ang medyo naisi-isip namin na unang place to travel. But, since my visa nga, so, takot rin kami mag-apply ng visa before. So, nag-travel muna kami sa non-visa countries. Like, uh, we have Hong Kong, uh, Singapore, Malaysia... Uh, Indonesia wala rin, pero hindi kami nakapunta doon, sadly, because limited lang yung time namin. Uh, so, yes. Now, nung meron na kaming history, travel history, then medyo mas nagkalakas na kami ng loob to apply for a Japan visa. But it was all a risk because, syempre, depende pa rin siya sa visa officer kung ma-approve kayo or hindi. So, I will share what we did. Uh, result muna tayo. We got approved for a multiple entry visit visa it was good for uh five years and so 2018 valid siya hanggang 2023 and ang duration of stay that was given to us was uh, 30 days so meaning pwede kaming magpabalik-balik sa japan hence we have multiple entry pero every entry namin we're only allowed to stay up to 30 days then kailangan ng exit and then balikan na lang ulit yeah and we, uh, my whole family was approved. So it was me, my husband, and my three kids. So we applied at the same time. So medyo, eto nahirapan din kami sa paghanap ng visa agency namin. Kasi, so right now, hindi mo siya pwedeng, hindi ka pwedeng mag-do it yourself na papasa mo mismo sa embassy ng Japan. Before, I think that was possible. But recently, through agencies ka lang pwede magpasa ng application mo. And then, yung agency ang magpapasa sa embassy. So, the embassy only deals with visa agencies. Ang daming nag-o-offer ng, um, ang daming nag-o-offer ng um, visa application service. And medyo kuripot kami, considering na lima rin kami, so medyo mahal siya for us. Kaya naghanap kami nung medyo mura-mura. Ang hanap po namin ay Discovery Tours. So, they are in Makati. The reasons why we chose them unang-una is the rates are very competitive. So, they only charge back then, 2018, 800 per applicant. Um, so, it's the same rate if you apply for a single entry or a, a, a multiple entry. Kasi sa iba, let's say for example, for example, you apply, or their, their charge for single entry is 800 and then for multiple entry they would charge 1100 so parang ganun yung yung basta mas mataas iba iba yung yung rates so we went with that and also very accommodating sila um we we spoke to representatives via facebook email and the branch then so pag tumawag ka talaga sumasagot naman sila ng um, ng questions so they assisted us kaya na prepare ko din yung documents beforehand and then they gave us time for submission so nung pumunta kami doon sa um, office nila handa na rin yung documents kumbaga ipapasa na lang i-arrange na lang nila uh, you know they just check even verify to check kung kompleto lahat and then they passed it so that makes it easier kasi meron ibang agency siguro who do not want to deal with this over the phone gusto nila um, uh, punta ka in person or anything like that. I've had experiences with uh, agencies like that. So, medyo mahirap yung ganun. Or they would want na magbayad ka muna before they assist you. But with discovery tours, um, talagang, you know, kahit hindi ka nila kinala, they, do, they won't even ask your background. They won't even ask who you are. Talagang, if my question ka, they will answer right away. They will help right away. Uh, yun. Okay. So, now, the process is, of course, you have to prepare your documents. So, yan. Ito ang mga documents na prepare namin. We applied, uh, we applied for multiple entry. Um, 
it, it was a risk. Kasi ang multiple entry, usually, sabi nila ang na-approve lang is for those who have been to Japan already. Or there are, may, may, ano sila, may, may factors kung sino yung mga pwedeng mag-apply for a multiple entry. And then, there, there's a group, you know, there's a, a list that says na pwede rin mag-apply ang applicant for multiple entry if they are part of, um, if uh, parang high financial with high financial capacity so nag take kami ng risk um, wala kasing amount na nirelease sa Japan Embassy even the agency confirmed us wala namang set amount kung magkano ba ang, ang high what is considered a high financial capacity so we just tried it um, yeah mo na kung ma-approve well okay we, we apply for multiple entry baka naman hindi naman i-reject pwedeng isuhan na kami ng single entry right so we did apply under the high financial capacity to give you an idea um seven digits ang, ang nasa bank account namin yun i won't say the exact figure but yun seven digits naman siya okay and then uh it was worth it i think pumasok naman yung high financial capacity na yun. i don't know <laughs> siguro dahil doon na kaya kami na approve or siguro din dahil sa travel history or anything like that okay so, of course, um, requirements would be your valid Philippine passport. Nung ngayon, um, once you have to have the physical copy of your Philippine passport because you submit it during the application and ibabalik na lang nila. Either with stamp if you're approved or kung wala, wala. Babalik lang nila as is yung passport mo. But you have to submit it on the application. So, please time it kasi baka kailangan mo ng valid ID or you, ha you need to have that passport for... Uh, other purposes, so just so you are aware, of the Philippine passport. Yes, and also a duly accomplished Japan visa form. Yes, so eto dunin namin finila panto kaya dun lang kami medyo nagtagal kasi nga lima. So fill up, fill up ng form ganyan. Photo ID, uh, marry specifications for Japan visa, but two by two. Uh, passport, yung parang passport size sa Philippine passport natin. So, 2 by 2 uh, picture, white background, no earrings, no caps, no glasses. Yeah. And birth certificate from PSA. So, this is original copy. So, ito nga lang maghahanda ka talaga ng original copy kasi hindi na nila ibabalik. Yes. So, that's one thing that you have to prepare kasi hindi madaling kumuha ng birth certificate ngayon. And they want the certificates to be issued um within a year. So, valid pa siya for, you know, one year. Parang ganun siya. Within the last year siya na issue. Um, marriage certificate from PSA for, for married. Uh, ito, since my husband and I were also applying. So, pag nag-apply kayo at the same time, isang application lang siya bali. So, isang marriage certificate lang pinasa namin. Hindi na one copy for me, one copy for them. And also for financial uh, proof of finances namin, proof of funds, so financial document, isa na lang din for, as a whole family na siya technically. Okay, and also daily schedule in Japan. Ito ang tinatawag natin itinerary. So you don't need to book a ticket yet, you don't need to book a hotel. Uh, please know, kasi pag na-refuse ang visa, so may hirapan kayo for refunds. And they don't require it anyway. So, just make a list of your itinerary. So, kami, naggawa lang kami. Like, uh, and sinortin namin yung stay para hindi masyadong malaki ang hahanapin ng, ng embassy. So, parang three, four days. Four days yung nilagay namin itinerary. So, we just searched for like a hotel in Japan and then nag-concentrate lang kami sa isang city. And yung mga famous uh, spots doon sa city, nilagay na lang namin siya. So, itinerary day 1, day 2, day 3, day 4. Para alam, na lang, alam nila na, you know, you have places to go there. And you have an idea of where you're going, saan kayo magsistay, gano'n. Okay. Uh, just one itinerary for the whole family. And then, additional Japan visa requirements ay kapag ka may guarantor ka. So, for me, um, wala akong guarantor kasi ako yung guarantor. So, for my, f my husband and my kids, I made a um, guarantee letter. So, doon yung, doon ko lang, para ano lang siya, guarantee letter na ako yung bahala sa expenses nila, ganyan. And I also, um, doon ko na rin nilagay yung explanation letter kasi, uh, 
my ITR kami ng husband ko, but we were unemployed during that time. Now, kinailangan namin i-explain bakit kami unemployed. Well, thankfully, during that time rin naman is we are processing our papers for Canada. And my visa rin ako and yung bunso ko for um, traveling to Canada. Makikita doon na student permit me. Student permit ako. So, I just explained na kaya unemployed na kami is because um, papunta na rin naman ako ng Canada and we just want to travel before, you know, we leave the country. And my husband is in the process as well of, of doing his visa. So, kaya unemployed na siya. Yun, in-explain lang namin na before leaving Canada, before maghiwala yung family namin for a while, we want to visit Japan first. So, nandun, nandun na rin yung explanation ng, ng kung wala kang documents and your purpose of travel to Japan. Sinama ko na lahat dun. Okay. Uh, yun, proof of relationship with guarantor. Well, since married naman kami, uh, marriage certificate, and since your birth certificate includes me as your mother, so yun na yung naging proof of relationship. Okay. And bank certificate. So, nag-submit din kami ng bank certificate. Um, multiple bank certificates technically kasi we have multiple bank accounts that amount to that. So, nag-submit ako ng bank certificate. Bank certificate. My husband as well. Joint accounts. Ganun. ITR. Yes, um, my ITR. So, anyway, ITR is only needed for the sponsor or the guarantor. Anyway, yeah. But, um, yeah. Okay, so I think um, that's it. Actually, very easy lang siya. Very straightforward your requirements. Although, ang isa ko lang naaalala is dun sa birth certificate, if late registration ang birth certificate ng isang applicant, you have to provide a baptismal certificate and a Form 137. Ngayon, yun ang medyo naging problema namin kasi wala kaming Form 137. So, kinonfirm na lang namin. So, the agency confirmed kung pwede ba itong um, baptismal certificate na lang and um, a certificate of enrollment from the school. Kasi, hindi naman madaling kumuha ng Form 137. It takes about a week or two. Eh, gusto na namin mag-file din ng visa. So, pinayagan naman kami ng agency ng baptismal certificate ng bata and uh, certificate of enrollment ng school. So, yun yung sinama namin for uh, documents needed for late registration ng birth certificate. Yeah. Yan. So, it's very easy. Um, pagdating namin doon sa discovery tours, wala naman masyadong tao. So, they checked my documents, kinumpile nila while I was filling up the application form. So, ang hirap nga kasi lima. Ganun. And, um, hindi na kailangan ng applicants, lahat kaming lima na nandoon. Only um, me and my husband ang nirequire kasi mag-fill up may pipirmahan din si husband ko. So, kaming dalawa dapat yung nanon. And then, for the kids, I sign on their behalf. Yun. So, it was very fast. They submitted it. And then, here. And then, there came the waiting game. Nakakakaba. But then, uh, two days lang, technically. So, for example, Monday ngayon, Tuesday, Wednesday, when we call them, okay na. And the name passport. But they're not going to tell you if approved or rejected because I think that's the best way to do it. Kasi nga naman, pag sinabing refuse ko over the phone, medyo, <laughs> medyo naman panghinaan ka na ng loob, diba? Uh, yeah. So, yun. Um, they called, we called and then they said, okay na for pickup. So, we, we went there. Meron lang silang schedule ng submission and meron din silang schedule ng um, claiming. So, which which makes it easier and systematic na para hindi dagsaan ng tao. So, yun. And then, ah, uh, yeah. We were approved, five of us. Unfortunately, hindi pa kami nakarating ng Japan. Nag-book kami, but na-cancel, so na-refund. But, uh, actually, na but, yeah, the, the visa is still valid uh, till 2023. So, hopefully, may chance pa na makapunta kami. Okay, and uh, some other questions that uh, people may ask if someone can submit their application on behalf of you. Um, pwede naman, as long as you provide an authorization letter and your ID, yes, papayagan niya ng agency. But you can just confirm with the agency if they, you know, have a different uh, policy for that. Alright, and then if you're approved, then plan for your trip already. If it's rejected, as far as I know, you can reapply, but you have to wait for a minimum six months. 
period to lapse before you try to apply again. Like the same, pag naga apply ka ng ibang, pag naga apply ka ng visa, there are a couple of things that you have to prepare for your application. Kung gaano ba yung risk na ma-approve ka or ma-reject. Now, you have to look at the situation. It doesn't mean that if you have the money to travel, is you approve ka na ng embassy. So, they look into various uh, factors. Pwedeng, pwedeng, um, they might think that you're not going to come back home to the Philippines. So, that's why they ask for like a certificate of employment or something like that to prove na nagtatrabaho ka, na may funds ka, ganun. So, hindi ka mag-TNT doon, hindi ka mag-ahat ng trabaho doon, meron kang babalikan dito sa Pilipinas. And nakakatulong din if you have an established travel history. For example, nakapunta ka na sa ibang bansa or meron ka ng visa sa ibang bansa din, that's gonna help out strengthen your application. Thank you for listening, guys, and I hope I was able to share valuable information. If I, if you have any other questions, um, just type it down below the comment box, and I will answer that. Uh, I will try to answer that for you. So thank you, guys. That's it. And uh, if you apply for a Japan visa, I hope it gets approved. And have a safe travel. Bye.